how can we approach the calculation of the variance of the group data when we don't know what are those observations uh, and we don't know their deviations from the mean. So to answer that question, let's uh, think about uh, the meaning of the variance. Variance, if we had the actual observations, the variance would be sum of deviations of each observation, let's say xi, from the mean of the data set to the power of 2 divided by number of observations minus 1 because it's a sample. Now this actually, to simplify that, it means that the variance is sum of the deviation square divided by n minus 1, or we can call this, uh, look at, it is actually the mean squared deviation. So what we have to calculate is mean squared deviations and or average of a squared deviations it's the same so we can call it the for better clarity we call it average squared deviations from the mean This is the mean, the meaning of the variance. So now that we don't have the original uh, observations, what can we do? How can we calculate the, the variance in this case? We will do this trick. Although we don't know what are those two numbers that are in this group, uh, in the first group, but we can consider the midpoint of this group as the best estimator that we can have for those numbers. So if we want to calculate the, the variance of this data set, this is what we will do. We would do something like this. We would say the variance would be the deviation square of the first observation. But what is the best estimate that we have for the first observation? That would be 35. So 35 minus the average of my observations, which is 61.47059. This is the, the mean of my data set. And if I square this, this would be mean deviation for the first observation. Then I have to add it with the deviation of the second observation. But what is the deviation of the second observation? The deviation of the second observation... Uh, okay, what is the second observation? The second observation is still in this group, and our best estimate for it would be 35. So this is the deviation of the second observation, 61.7705. Okay, now for... Faster writing, I consider that 0, 6 to the power of 2. This is the deviation of the second observation. Now we have to add the deviation of the third observation. The deviation of the third observation, what is that? Okay, the third observation is in this group. Okay. So, if we want to calculate the deviation of the third observation, the best estimate we can have is the midpoint of this group in which the third observation is located, and that would be 45. So, the third, fourth, and so forth, they are in that group. So, for my third observation, I would consider 45. This is my observation. And how much does it have deviation from the mean of this data set, 77.06, and this is the deviation square. However, the next observation is also 45. 
minus, okay, again I write, I don't write the whole thing, it is x bar to the power of 2, and the next observation is also 45 minus x bar to the power of 2, this is the next deviation, and we need four of these deviations, and we will continue like that. So what is the, what are we doing? And then we have to divide it by the number of observations. So, okay, we divide this. But how many observations do we have? We have, if we look at this data, we totally have had 30, 34 observations. But because this is the standard deviation of a sample, we divide it. When we are calculating the, the variance, we divide by n minus 1, not by n. This is similar to what we did for the, for the situation when we knew the numbers. Okay, but what is this? This is our best estimate for the variance, but what we actually did is this. We said the variance is in the numerator we calculated two deviations. This is, this is the, the deviation of the first observation, so deviation of the first observation is square, and this is deviation, again, of the first, this is the deviation of the second observation is square, but the way that they are calculated is this, these are, in fact, calculated by calculating the mean of the first group minus the average of the whole data set to the power of 2. But because the first group had a frequency of, so this is the mean of the first group, but the first group had two observations, therefore we multiplied it by 2, for the next uh, set, if you remember, we had these, uh, this is the, the deviation of the third number, but 45 was the best estimate for the deviation of the second group. So this is the deviation of the third, the best estimate for the deviation, and this is the deviation of square, this is also again deviation of square, and so forth. But what we did here, because there are four observations in this group, because there are four observations in this group, what we did is that we said, okay, four times midpoint of the second group minus the average of that group to the power of two. And basically what we continued to do was that we multiplied the frequency of ith group multiplied by the mean of ith group minus the average of the whole data set to the power of 2. And then, and then we continued like that, and then we divided the result by basically n minus 1. This is the best estimate that we could get for the, the variance of the group data. But we calculated the variance this way. We calculated the sum of multiplication of the frequency of each group multiplied by the midpoint of each group minus the average of the whole data set to the power of 2, or deviation of square. And then we divided that by n minus 1 to calculate the average squared deviations. This gives us a squared deviation, and because in each class we have these many observations, then this sum of these gives us the total
squared deviations of all of the uh, data that we have, and then we, de we average them. So the other way of looking at this, or summarizing this, is that we actually calculated the uh, variance by summing up the multiplication of each, the frequency of each group multiplied by the deviation of the midpoint of that group squared, or a squared deviation of each observation in that group. And then we divided that by n minus 1. So this is the best estimate that we can have for the average squared deviation of all of, our, all of our observations. And basically, uh, for each observation, we, can, we consider the midpoint of that group as the best estimate for that observation. And we calculated the, um, the, square, the average squared deviation of uh, all of our midpoints. Okay? So let's do that now using Excel. We are going to calculate the same thing. So now we want to calculate the, the average squared deviation of the midpoint. Now let's see how we can calculate this, uh, the variance or the average squared deviations of the midpoints from the mean using Excel. Okay. The first thing we have to do, we have to find out what are the deviations. Okay, so the deviation of the first group and the second group and so forth. So we have to find the distance from the midpoint of the group to the, to the average. And this is the average of the whole data set. So we have to calculate minus x bar. Okay, so for the first data set, it would be the average of the first group minus the average of the whole data set. And I fix that. I use absolute addressing so that address doesn't change because always we are going to compare with the average of the whole data set. So this is the deviation of the first data, uh, the, the first group. This is the deviation of the second group and so forth. So these are the deviations. Some of the average of the groups are less than the mean, and some of them are more than the mean. So this is the deviation of the first group. Now, we have to find out the deviation square. So now here, we will calculate deviation squared. Okay. So basically, we have to multiply this by itself, or you can use the square function. Now, these are the deviation squares. So now all of them become positive. But there is a problem. We need to, for each group, this is the deviation square of one of those midpoints. But in this group, we have two numbers. In this group, we have four numbers. So actually, we have to calculate the frequency multiplied by deviation squares to find out what is the contribution of the squared deviations of the first group. So to calculate that, we have to calculate the deviation square that comes from one of the observations multiplied by the number of observations that are in that group. So it is, or, okay, to follow the formula, we multiply 2 by the deviation of square that comes from any of those observations. So from one observation, we got 700 deviation, and from two observations, we get 2 multiplied by 700 squared deviations. Okay. So this is the sum of the squared deviations of the first group and so forth. So now we have sum of the squared deviation of all of the groups. So if we sum these up, these are sum of squared deviations. So maybe I write it here. This is sum of 
of all squared deviations of mid points. And uh, now to calculate the, the variance, the variance in fact is average squared deviation. So to find the variance, we simply should divide the result by the number of observations minus 1. And that is what we will do here. So we will, here, we will say this is sum of fi d squared, and then we divide it by the number of observations, minus 1, and that is our variance. So this is our variance of grouped data, and if we want to calculate the, the standard deviation of our group data, that would be actually simply the squared root of that number. So this would be the standard deviation of our group data.